thank you chairperson for these nice introductions good morning everybody uh, i must be thankful to this uh, organizer for giving me this opportunity and uh, my first speakers of uh, dr krishna has nicely described this uh, diabetes and female so i will discuss, uh, discuss a particular point of this uh, uh, segment of this diabetes in female that is female sexual dysfunction in type 2 diabetes which is the least common uh, discussed topic in this diabetic forum so who defined sexual dysfunctions as an individual unable to participate uh, in a sexual relationship as he or she would wish diabetes is associated with many long term complications among which sexual dysfunctions uh, is uh, one of them in both gender both male and female and sexual dysfunction in diabetic women is often overlooked due to this social taboo in uh, female sexuality and this female sexual dysfunctions it mostly includes the domain like desire arousal orgasm lubrication pain and satisfaction these six domains are particularly affected in uh, female coming to the prevalence of this female sexual dysfunction it is uh, the global scenario the recent meta analysis which involved 25 uh, studies approximately 4000 women are included in the study in the age group of 18 to 17 years and the prevalence of the fsd in the diabetes is around 40 uh, 18 uh, is around 68 to 70% and this is the global scenario if you look to the indian scenario the general prevalence is around 35 to 60% but the study in type 2 diabetes with female sexual dysfunction in india is very less the original study from this bangalore by the nagpal it is a prevalence of this fsd is more than 62 or 68% and another study by dr sanjay karla from karnal are they specific they concentrate on this uh, each and every domain of the sex, uh, female sexual uh, dysfunction and uh, some of these domain they crossed 70 to 80% and there is very less original study regarding this prevalence in india from that study bangalore if you look uh, that domain uh, whether it is dgr arousal lubrication orgasm pain and satisfactions when you compared with the control group every domain is affected more in comparison to the other and the dgr arousal and pain component is affected more and statistically significant from this study though it is a tertiary care study in bangalore and if you compare the uh, age group in diabetes as this age increases particularly the domain dgr and this arousal is more affected in diabetic population when it is compared to that of the non diabetic populations and coming to the etiology of the female sexual dysfunction as we know all chronic diseases like hypertension chronic illness uh, yeah, some shameless people who don't register and walk in free here so please you please continue the conference bad man will be yeah.
yeah uh, common uh, among this uh, common uh, etiology and risk factor of this female sexual dysfunction diabetes is one of the most most common one and this chronic illness like hypertension and other uh, uh, other uh, drug uh, common drugs are also and environmental factors are also responsible for this female sexual dysfunction in diabetes and if you look to this normal sexual response uh, uh, a, a dgr when there is a dgr and drive there is information is processed by this brain particular segment that i will come later and that uh, lead to this subjective arousal followed by the physical arousals that there may be the uh, arousal and responsive desire followed by a reward reward in the form of the emotional and physical satisfactory and that lead to the motivations from the other sets so this is the normal physiological response and this main center is activations of the limbic hippocampal structure responsible for the sexual arousal thereby there is activation of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems which led to the increase in the blood flow to the genitalia there may be the increase clitorals and the uh, engorgement of the clitoris eversion of the labia minora thereby uh, the vaginal canal is lubricated and it is dilated relaxation of the vaginal wall smooth muscles occurs so this is this normal physiological phenomena along with that some noradrenergic and non cholinergic neurotransmitters like the vip and the cno nitric oxides are involved in this smooth muscle relaxations which enhance the genital blood flow and this arousal is mainly responsible for the sympathetic nervous system is mainly responsible for the arousals furthermore various hormones like that uh, sex steroids estrogen testosterones and progesterones they are also responsible for the female sexual functions and estrogens is mainly responsible for the dgr and it has significant role in maintaining these mucosal uh, epithelium sensory thresholds and the genital blood flow is maintained through these estrogens and and androgen is mainly responsible for the sense of well being it is uh, primarily affect the sexual desire arousal and orgasms and progesterone has a permissible effect and it has play play a role in enhancing the receptivity so these are the hormone and these are the neuronal pathway for the normal sexual response of the female coming to the pathophysiology of this fsd uh, in diabetes what happen in diabetes it is the interplay of the hyperglycemia or dysglycemia diabetic neuropathy diabetic vasculopathy and hormonal changes in the diabetes along with the psychological factor which is responsible for the changes in the female and that causes this female sexual dysfunctions so hyperglycemia it will lead to the reduced hydration of the mucus poor vaginal lubrication and dyspareunia is there and simultaneously hypoglycemia is also causing the less hydration to the mucosa and dyspareunia and that is if there is a blood glucose is very high there is incidence of the genital urinary infections that is also one of the important cause for the dyspareunia in female so if somebody is suffering from the diabetic neuropathy then uh, for a normal as i have described for a normal sexual activities that is intact sensory and autonomic nervous system is required so arousal orgasm and the sexual when desired is mainly affected if someone is suffering from the diabetic neuropathy again in diabetic neuropathic patients they may have the reduced vibration vibration sensation in the genitalia and muscular weakness vaginal muscle weakness and pelvic floor muscle weakness this may be they are which may lead to the uh, female sexual dysfunctions and again vasculopathy similarly there is changes in the local blood flow there is changes in the structural and functional changes in the pelvic floor and genital organ which may lead to the fibrosis and also there is due to the uh, decrease supply of the blood flow there is uh, lack of engorgement of the clitoris so lubrication is less arousal is less and dyspareunia may be there so vasculopathy may affect this, uh, this segment of the female sexual dysfunctions and apart from that if somebody is suffering from any lesion in hypothalamus or hy limbic hippocampal structures then the uh, sexual arousals may be uh, hampered 
and also other hormonal imbalance in diabetes that we see uh, insulin like growth factor one and others they may may it is hypothesized that these changes in that may cause the female sexual dysfunctions apart from that diabetes is uh, uh, most of the time associated with the hypothyroidism and polycystic ovarian disease and sometimes hypothalamic pituitary disorders may be associated with the uh, diabetes maybe type 1 and type 2 and it is it, it may be the cause of the female sexual dysfunctions and the psychological issues several studies have demonstrated that these women with diabetes and sexual dysfunction is predominantly linked to this psychological factor among these psychology factor depression is one of these commonest one so the next coming how to approach case of this FSD. We have so many tools like this female sexual functional index, female sexual dysfunctional index, natal SF score and so many di uh, diagno uh, tools are there to diagnose this female sexual index, to evaluate a female sexual index. The common which we are practicing this female sexual functional index and female sexual dysfunctional index. It is basically a patient reported outcomes. It comprises of these nine questionnaire which cover the six domain what I have discussed and the score minimum score of 2 and maximum score of 36 if the score under 26 if the female is suffering from the G, female sexual dysfunctions and but this FSI uh, 19 it is very lengthy procedures and in our day-to-day -day practice it is very difficult to go so if so the shorter versions of this female sexual functional index 19 is female sexual functional index 6 and it, cons it is also well val validated. It consists of four, six domains, six questions, one questions, uh, one each score from 0 to 5. So the total score of 19 or less than 19, this person is suffering from the G, sexual dysfunctions and it is subjected to that of the G, well, uh, that of the G patient center interview or that of the G female sexual functional index scoring systems 19. Then again, addition um, female sexual dysfunction index is a new thing which is added to this scenario and it is re, uh, it is nothing but uh, the interest, they have added the interest in having the satisfying sex to that of the female sexual functional index is female sexual dysfunction index. It is a better marker for the evaluations of, the of a female's problems. Apart from that, so many other tools are there but the well validated tool is female sexual functional index 6. So, uh, evaluating a female sexual dysfunction FSD is a, always challenging because of that it is a social taboo associated personal taboo associated with these females and also doctors limited knowledge regarding how to handle this case and also time constraint in our part this is this uh, difficulties we are facing while evaluating case of the female sexual uh, uh, dysfunction FSD for that, uh, physicians may follow some of these models like allow model and please still models by which it will be easier to evaluate a patient, evaluate a female of a FSD, female sexual dysfunctions. During these past 30 years, the international bodies, they have defined these classifications from 1992 to that of this 1922. There are so many bodies, international bodies, they define these female, uh, these female sexual dysfunctions. And repeatedly, there is changing of these definitions. That's why this epidemiology of this FSD is varies from country to country and also from, this, from that of this scenario. But uh, somehow, all these definitions, whether it is ISD, whether it is DSM, or whether it is ISS, WSH, uh, all these uh, definitions, they include more or less these six domains, what I have described previously. It is somehow, in, somehow moving around these six. So, uh, apart from that uh, patient scenario, uh, clinicals evaluations, we have some objective test. Those objective tests will concentrate on this blood circulations to this pelvic floor or blood circulation to this genitalia along with that some this neuronal circulation, muscular and neurologic circulations. These blood circulations like vaginal photoplethysmography, Doppler ultrasonography, clitoral VPP in which we will detect this, uh, that is if someone is having FST, there is a decrease in this uh, PSB, pulsatile index and increase in this 
resistive index, there is laser Doppler perfusion index and also this pudental arteriogram. These are these dynamic tests for this uh, evaluate this blood circulation to the pelvic floor and the genitalia. And apart from that, muscular uh, part is muscular and neuronal part. If you want to evaluate, you may go for this clitoral elo electromyography. But uh, these these objective tests are not are less well val validated than these subjective subjective test. Coming to this management portions, I will cover it quickly. Uh, uh, this mainstay of treatment is lifestyle interventions, dietary patterns, glycemic control, which will address uh, these complications, and this uh, treatment of this local coach physiotherapy and psychotherapy and drugs. Lifestyle interventions, I will quote here these look ahead trials, that is uh, the uh, effect of these intensives. They have divided these group two groups. Uh, one is this intensive lifestyle intervention and other is this conventional diabetic support education groups. It is a prospective study. At the end of these one years, they found that the female sexual functional index uh, is more, uh, is improved, that is improvement in this intensive group when compared with that conventional group and the domain, some of the domains are improved and the, some of these patients, they are getting benefit from that, they are getting benefit from these lifestyle interventions. Next, coming to this and also remission of this FST, they have noticed the remission of this FST. And in uh, dietary, coming to the dietary modifications, Mediterranean, there is a prospective study on this Mediterranean diet. They divided, they divided these populations into the three categories, total 1, total 2 and total 3. Those patients who have adher more adherent to this uh, Mediterranean diet, the FST is less in, this tot in that totals. So this is the information regarding this dietary. Next, coming to the drugs, that is testosterone therapy, which is commonly, which is well studied in this FST scenario. This testosterone therapy in those approximate to the physiological testosterone concentrations in the premenopausal women exert a beneficial effect in every segment of the FSD, particularly they will reduce the sexual distress. But these recommendations do not apply to this injectable form, to pellet form, or this combination formulation, what we are using to our male patients. And that will increase the physiological uh, level of the testosterone in female. So it is only applicable to these patch formulations. There are several meta-analysis, uh, randomized control trials and meta-analysis. The result of that is they have applied 300 micrograms of the testosterone patch and it is at the end of the study, this is meta-analysis, the result of this meta-analysis is that there is satisfying sexual episodes and that is, uh, the testosterone uh, group having more satisfying sexual episode, sexual activities, orgasm, desire and every component of the FSD has improved in testosterone patch treatment. But all these study, the duration of the therapy is up to six months. So it is the natural, uh, this, this is the study groups, I will not go into details. Then and, uh, but you should have uh, uh, that idea in your mind that uh, that is a side effect of the testosterone like akin, hirsutisms and virilizations uh, and a repeated monitoring of uh, um, testosterone levels should be there while, while someone is with testosterone therapy and these uh, side effects may be irreversible. And uh, if you are going, going to prescribe testosterone to a female, you should evaluate clinical and biochemical features of hyperandrogenic genes at three to six months. And uh, if there is no response within the six months, then then patient uh, then we should discontinue the treatments. Then apart from this testosterone, other androgenic preparations like that is DHES. It is DHES is only recommended for this hypoactive sexual disorder, not to this other segment of this FST. And uh, FDA, it is not FDA approvals. And uh, one uh, formulation of the DHT intravaginal preparations is approved for this vulvo vaginal atrophy patients. Next, coming in this context, I would like to quote one study which is by Professor Professor Sujay Ghosh of Kolkata. They have given 25 milligrams of this DHES to the G twice daily from a to a study groups. And uh, 20, though this number of this patient is less, after three months they have they are getting this significant benefit in these study groups. And this group of this patient is hypotha hypogonadotropic hypogonadism patients. But there is significant um, improvement in these FSI scores. 
So, uh, uh, although the testosterone has been studied extensively, no androgen therapy has been approved by the FDA. Next, coming to the non-androgenic, non-hormonal preparations like that of the fibrinocerins, which is approved by the for the low sexual disorder or hypoactive sexual disorder. But it is, uh, as we all know, it is a zero. Uh, it is an inhibitory effect of the serotonin and increases the excitatory effect of the dopamine. And it is prescribed in the dose of the 100 milligrams once daily at the bedtime. Potential side effect is hypotension and syncope and reactions with that of the alcohols. So, and uh, liver, any sort of the G hepatic impairments, the drugs is contraindicated. So, next coming to the, G, or, uh, this is the original, I will complete, I will go quickly. Then, uh, this is the G, Begonia trials, which is the famous trial for the G, uh, Flibanoserins, and that is improvement in all segments. And other medications like sedanam fields, uh, there is no, uh, as it is a well-studied molecules in this male, but it is it has no significant improvement in the uh, female and it is not FDA approved. And bupropenone is one of these well, uh, well-studied molecules, those who have the G, drug associated with the FST. And estrogenic preparations, it has also recommended in the G, Post-menopausal women, so not for the pre-menopausal women, and it is improved all segment of the FST. And the selective estrogen receptor blocker is also uh, has role in the vulvovaginal atrophic cases. And lubricant, we all know, water uh, hyaluronic acid based uh, lubricant is more uh, effic efficacy than the water based lubricant. Pelvic floor ex uh, floor exercise, we all know, that it has a significant role in the vaginal uh, vaginismus and also in the other uh, muscular disorders. So the treatment options may be modification of the risk factors, addressing the psychological issue, cognitive behavioral therapy and psychotherapy, clitoral therapy, treatment of the depression if there is present, and hormone replacement for the postmenopausal women. So to summarize my presentations, female sexual dysfunctions, uh, the, uh, the, it, 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 the female sexual function and dysfunction should be assessed as a general uh, while, while you are going for the general checkup of a diabetic woman. And uh, we should um, uh, evaluate these patients and identify the particular component of the FSD so that we, it is very easy, it will be easier for the treatment. And the FSD should be managed by this multidisciplinary team including diabetologist, gynecologist, and, uh, specialist in the sexual health and psychotherapist. So, despite of these multiple trials, no single drug is, effect for, for, is effective for this FSD. So, for that, further studies are needed to provide a good uh, therapeutic option for this FSD in type 2 diabetes. So, thank you for your patience hearing. Sorry for that.